Hello? I love you. Yo, welcome to another untimely review. We're back with another recommendation, so shouts out to you for this one. I remember this being advertised on Nick back in the day, and I wanted nothing to do with it because I thought that it was like Harry Potter or Narnia or something. But let's see if I should have checked it out back then, or if I was right to switch to Cartoon Network every time the ad popped up. Let's get right into the story. Some major spoilers for the Citrus Man's multiple connected occurrences that have a negative outcome. We begin with what I can only describe as a fever dream induced by overdosing on Keebler cookies before we get a fourth wall break so fast you think Deadpool was a part of this, and we find out that from the narrator's own words, The movie you are about to see is extremely unpleasant. Yeah, off to a bad start, unfortunately. We find out that the narrator is Lemony Schnicket himself, first he's sour, but he stays sour. A writer and actor looks nothing like this character, slash real person. And he starts his tale going through each of the Baudelaire children's singular character traits. We find out that there are three children, Violet, Kid Prodigy, should be able to stop 80% of the issues in this movie, doesn't. Klaus, a nerd, and Sonny, bites more than just ankles. Sonny's my favorite so far. Papa. And we get the first unfortunate event of the movie, the kid's parents dying in a fog. How wonderful that this is the first thing that happens four minutes into this PG movie. So while Lemony Schnimini is narrating, the kids go to their burned down home, which seems like a place that children shouldn't be in, and there's a focus put on the spyglass, which means it'll definitely be important later. Lemony again tries to stop the audience from watching the movie, but I don't listen to people with citruses in their names, so we're gonna keep going. We find out that even though Sunny can't speak, she's still giving up the spicy insults in between her goo goos and gagas, and that the kids are going to live with their cousin, Count Olaf. When they get there, we meet Justice Strauss of the High City Court. Why she told these children her occupation in their introduction, I don't know, but Justice Strauss, almost entirely a plot device. Oh, yeah, this guy's name is Poe, but I don't like his facial hair, so he will not be brought up again unless I really have to. Excuse me? We find out that the house Count Olaf actually lives in is this Scooby-Doo looking ass house, and we finally do get introduced to Count Olaf, a straight weirdo, has for sure buried a body before, and the theater kid that never grew up. And as he gives his grandiose introduction, we realize that Buddy is just interested in the inheritance that he'd get from taking care of the kids. We get a rundown of the layout of Olaf's place, and we see how he treats the kids by basically just making them his slaves to cook and clean the house. I mean, the house for sure needs to be clean, but like, come on, dude. When they don't cook him and his weirdo troop of actor friends the meal that he wants, he pimps Max Klaus, Bitch finds out that he actually won't get any money until Violet hits 18 and she's 14 now, so he just locks them in their room and goes back to being a weirdo with his pals. Klaus and Violet have a heart to heart and they make a little tent to remind them of their parents. Olaf gets official custody of the kids and the first thing bro does is leave them locked in a car on some train tracks so that they can meet Thomas the Tank Engine face to face. But through some ingenuity and some good old fashioned previously mentioned plot pertinent information, they get the train to switch tracks and are safe for now. And while Poe is a moron, he does take the children away from Olaf, so that's good, at least. The next foster parent they get is this weird snake fondler, but he seems nice so far, so it's okay. We get cock blocked by a faulty typewriter, and we find out that this dude's name is Uncle Monty. His anaconda always wants some. And even though Monty is definitely keeping something from the kids and trying to rush to a Peruvian excursion, he's still not nearly as bad as Olaf. Sometime later, Olaf dressed as an Italian man named Stefano pops up saying that he's Monty's new assistant and Violet and Klaus see right through the disguise, mainly because it's not very good. We see that Olaf got rid of Monty's assistant by tying him to a train, man this guy likes trains, and that he's trying to join the expedition to Peru expeditiously. The kids make Monty suspicious of Olaf, but he's still dumb, so not suspicious correctly, and due to this snake grabber's incompetence, he ends up deceased by methods we don't know because this is still a PG movie made by Nickelodeon. Can't have the youth being too traumatized. Hey look, it's Cedric the Entertainer, and he's mildly entertaining, so that's fun. Since everyone thinks that Monty was killed by a snake, go figure, CGI Sonny goes to play with the snake to show that he's actually friendly, and because his plan is ruined, 
Olaf dips out, leaving hands, clothes, and hopefully that dumbass mustache he had. So now, with four family members down, they go to their Aunt Josephine's, a grammar auntie. There's even some more mystery added to the spyglass and what it means. We see what made Josephine the scaredest character I've seen this side of Chucky Finster, and we see Olaf with a new seafaring disguise. Olaf in his disguise gets Josephine more moist than Chuck E. Cheese ball pits, so she invites him over for dinner while the kids get food to cook, and when they come back to the house, guess what? She's also now deceased. Or so we were meant to think. She actually left a message in her fake suicide note that she's hiding in Curdle Cave, gross name. And before they go to find her, they find out more about unraveling the mystery of the spyglass. They find Josephine, get her out of the cave because of her stupid fear of realtors, yes, that is actually in this goddamn movie, and learn just a teeny bit more about what really happened to the kid's parents. But before we learn anything that actually matters, they get attacked by leeches, the scariest of all cylindrical sea creatures. And unfortunately for them, the person who comes to save them is the BFG himself, Olaf. And while Josephine just straight up gives up the kids to Olaf to try and save herself, she just couldn't resist correcting Olaf's bad grammar, so she gets left to deal with the leeches and stopped attacking the boat for them to have a conversation, I guess. Poe and Cedric find them and tells Olaf that he couldn't even get the inheritance if something happened to the children. Unless, of course, Olaf was married to the person with the inheritance. Now, telling someone this rule seems like it's just asking people to get married to get over that rule, but who am I to doubt this fictional government? So, Olaf decides to make this play where he marries Violet, who I, and the movie, must remind you just in case you forgot, is 14. But they say that just because Olaf is technically her guardian, he can okay the marriage, even though the marriage is to him. My second reaction to this was what the fuck? Hey, Lemony Snicket. What the fuck? And I'm not gonna do my Googles on that because I'm 100% sure that puts you on a list. FBI, open up! And since Olaf has Sonny as a hostage, Violet goes along with it, but Klaus decides to try and free Sonny himself. We find out that it was Olaf who burned down the kid's home, and Olaf and Violet do get married, but before anything can actually happen, Klaus is able to burn the marriage certificate, and Olaf went on a villain speech. So, he's definitely going to jail now. At least, he should have, but the justice system, even in this movie, is fucking terrible. Anyway, the kids go to their house one more time, and for some reason, mail is delivered to this burned down place instead of being held at the post office, but whatever, movie's almost over. That is not my job! They read the letter and see that it's the one that was lost in the mail the first time that their parents went on a trip, and the movie ends with Lemony Fee Fi Chim Chim Snickety narrating and wrapping the movie up in a little bow. Alright, now that the story's out of the way, what did I think? I was actually very surprised by how much I like this movie. It's funny, it's emotional, it's weird, but it never comes off as cheesy. Well, aside from the ending, but since the Baudelaire children almost died like three times in this movie, I think they deserved a cheesy little happy ending. Initially, I didn't really know how to feel about all the adults not listening to the kids every time something was about to go wrong, because on one hand, it's mad true and adults constantly make mistakes that children saw a mile away, but I also feel like it's kinda lazy writing. But then at the end, the movie actually brings that up, and that because the adults weren't listening to the kids, they have some responsibility and what happened to those kids. Do the adults learn from this? No, doesn't seem like they do, but hopefully some of the audience did. But that isn't to say that the movie is really all that game changing. The movie is extremely formulaic, and honestly you can expect what's coming next if you've ever seen a movie before, but the little interactions between characters and the way that Olaf tries to get the kids back in his custody are pretty entertaining. And that's where this movie really shines, Olaf. Played by Jim Carrey is by far having the most fun and the best part of this movie. In my video on Bruce Almighty, I mentioned that Jim usually has this manic energy, and that's even more true in this one. Everything from his movements to his pronunciations and different accents he uses for his disguises are all extremely over the top and great. His character is a dickhead maniac who's awful, but man does Jim make him fun. The other characters are also pretty good overall, with other highlights being Emily Browning as Violet and Meryl Streep as Aunt Josephine. Emily has some really strong emotional scenes, and out of the three kid characters, she's by far the best. 
I mean, one is a literal baby who just giggles the whole movie. But the two babies that played her are little cuties, so that's fine. And Klaus... Klaus doesn't do shit in this, like, whole fucking movie, so who cares? Meryl Streep was just funny to me because I only know her as the lady who gets nominated for Academy Awards, so it was funny seeing her be such a goofy character in this kid's movie. And the movie is just goofy in general. The concepts, the characters, the locales are all just silly and goofy, but I really enjoyed it. I don't even really have that much to say because there's really not that much to it that I want to talk about. Sure, I could talk more about the fact that this grown-ass man tried to marry a 14-year-old or the fact that this dude thought that this baby was driving a car and didn't notice that a train almost hit the car or how this movie doesn't really explain what the fuck the spyglass thing was about but I like the other 90% of the movie so I'll cut it some slack. Even the CGI isn't that terrible for a movie in 2004. The only really negative thing about this movie that I can really say is that the movie is average length but it feels so much shorter because there's so many scenes where nothing really happens and with it being so formulaic you can pretty much guess what's gonna happen from a mile away. I don't know if I should criticize the movie or the source material for that more but hey this is a movie review not a book review. There's a lot of stupid little things in this movie but as a dumb kid in the eyes of everything but the state I can appreciate it. This is definitely a movie that I would recommend checking out. Again, just for Jim Carrey alone, this is a watch, but there's also a lot of charm in this movie as a whole that makes this a smooth and enjoyable watch. But let me know what you think. Are you a fan of the Lemony Witwicky franchise? Should I stop being disrespectful to that dumb name? What other Jim Carrey movies should I check out? Let me know in the comment section below. Mayhaps like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.